Education officials report smooth sailing as hundreds of Barbadian students return to the classroom. That's our top story in your Barbados Today Evening News Update for Monday, February 21. Today marked the official return to the physical classroom for scores of students and teachers after the COVID-19 pandemic disrupted learning for the past two years. And so far, Education Minister Kay McConney is satisfied with the rollout. McConney, who led a tour of officials at several primary and secondary schools today, assured that her ministry will continue to work with stakeholders and make any necessary adjustments. In readiness, it looks as if the children are ready. But you know what is the funny thing? When I came just before um, I went into the schools earlier this morning, I spoke to parents in their cars. I spoke to parents who were just standing outside of the school. You know the parents are more nervous than the children, but they are happy. They're happy. They're looking forward to it. And so I just want to say, you know what? We have made this step. Let us keep pushing through. Let us see how the rest of the day goes. Let us observe. Let us take note of the things that are working well and reinforce those things. The things that are not working so well, let us take that as a gift and then determine how best we will be able to treat that gift by addressing it in the appropriate way for everyone. And I am trusting that at the end of the day today, we will continue to give God thanks for having brought us this far and we will step into tomorrow bravely again, ready to redouble our efforts to bring even more students back in. Echoing the minister's comments, Chief Education Officer Dr. Ramona Archer Bradshaw told reporters they made the right decision to resume face-to-face -face classes today. I fully support the comments made by the minister. And I can tell you based on the excitement that I'm seeing coming from the teachers, the excitement that I'm seeing coming from the students, from the principals, We've made the right move to have students back at school from the 21st of February 2022. And as the minister said, it is a learning experience. And we are willing to hear from all of the partners in education with regard to how we can improve, how we can make things better, so that in the end we can make things better for our children. That is what it is about, our children. Meanwhile, principals from across the island reported that things went well. At the Frederick Smith Secondary School and the St. Winifred Schools, the principals reported that the students adjusted easily to their new learning arrangements. Frederick Smith had a very smooth transition this morning. We brought in the first forms, the fifth forms and the upper fifths. They came in, they lined up, they had the security checks, they had the sanitized checks and temperature checks and they moved on to the classrooms. They spent the morning with their form teachers getting their classroom assignments and they will report to the classrooms after lunch. Um, okay, any special provisions the school put in place? We know it's a big plan, so it's not really a space and not really a major issue, but any particular extra provisions? Um, we had to make sure that the, all the form rooms were socially distanced. That meant that we have 20 students per classroom. Any spillover is put in the room next door so that they, they don't break the, the physical distancing protocols but they can still benefit from instruction. Last week was tough because just trying to get everything in place, figuring out the schedule, the lessons, the how would you manage online this week as well as at school, um, adjusting the time schedule completely to try and maximize as much teaching time but yet still bear in mind the fact that the children are wearing masks. Um, I think the Thursday um, session was very good with the clinical psychologist. We had them come in and do a health and wellness. One of our former students came in to do a health and wellness seminar. And we really appreciated that. It allowed us to give us a chance to breathe and go. It doesn't have to be perfect. You know, we just have to start slowly and get the children back in. Meanwhile, some parents are pleased that their charges are back in the classroom. Some of them told Barbados Today they are anxious to see how things go, while others are taking a wait-and-see approach. I also have an older son, and he'll be returning to school back in March. So I'm not excited about that aspect. Because my little son, he's going to catch up quite quickly. But I'm, I'm glad that they're returning back to school. My thoughts on children returning to school is a brilliant a good thing to be happening. Children need to be social and use the social element within their life. Being at home, they weren't getting all that social activity going on in terms of 
interacting with other children of their peers so as to see what school life is all about. A lot of persons would have went to school by name but not by body. So they miss the whole concept of going to school, running about with one another, interacting with your neighbor, walking home, coming back. So that whole aspect I find is a good thing to see the children coming back out to school and a lot of persons also not learning uh, on the online, being frustrated. Where they got the teacher in the classroom, now they tend to be able to ask questions or a teacher then so may be able to pinpoint a child that was a little weak and didn't want to ask a question and using that opportunity to enhance the learning abilities. Students themselves are glad to return to their school plants. Describing it as a long overdue, some students from the St. Winifred School said they were anxious to return. I personally am very excited to be back at school, to be in person with my peers and my teachers. And I love the experience of being at school and especially being in fifth form and doing CXCs very soon. It's a, it's, I think it's very important for me to be here and to be doing my practical subjects. So I'm very excited to be back at school. As Alexis said previously, I am very happy to be back at school, especially for the practical subjects and getting to meet with my peers again and the teachers. I think that being at school is such an important aspect for students. And I honestly think it's long overdue. And I'm just so happy to be back. What's the feedback from your peers? My, um, the, my peers have been saying the same thing. They're so happy to be back at school. Now to the latest COVID-19 update. A total of 186 new infections, 85 males and 101 females were recorded on Sunday from the 947 tests conducted by the Besto Santos Public Health Laboratory. The cases comprise 46 persons under the age of 18 and 140 who were 18 years and older. There were 96 people in isolation facilities and 3,151 in home isolation. An 89-year-old unvaccinated woman died from the viral illness on Sunday. Her passing brings the death toll to 311. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, my name is Michelle Hines and I own a company called HM Novelties. I have three children, two of which are under the age to get the vaccine and that makes them vulnerable. And the eldest, she is vaccinated and that's a good thing because all she wants to do is hang with her friends. I take care of my 80 year old mum, and she has many comorbidities. And I love my mum, and I would not want for anything to happen to her. I am one of the ones that suffered absolutely no symptoms for either the first or the second jab. When you have the vaccine, you have a weapon to fight against this virus, to fight against this beast. 95% of my friends and family are vaccinated and that literally makes me feel secure. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional happenings, the St. Lucian Prime Minister Philip Jean Pierre is set to roll out new programs to benefit the nation's youth. It's all part of a campaign promise to develop the youth economy. We get the details from DBS Television. Prime Minister Philip J. Pierre has broken down the construct of the new youth economy. The Prime Minister says all matters relating to the economic development of the island's youth will be merged under the youth economy umbrella. Once you hear, you hear about youth, you, you, you must only really speak about sports and culture, etc. That's important. But the youth economy is specifically economic ventures for young people. And the aim is that we can convert hobbies into entrepreneurship and skills into business. And who else can be more innovative than young people? So there are several things that young people can do. But we don't want them tied into, not tied into a system, but tied into a situation where you have the normal functions that young people get bored about. But there must be transparency and there must be accountability. So what we say to you is if you have an idea, if a young person has an idea that they want to manifest itself to, make, to become sustainable and make money, that's what the youth economy is for. So the youth economy is part of the economic substructure for young people. 
On the international front, sources say U.S. President Joe Biden's administration has prepared an initial package of sanctions against Russia that includes barring U.S. financial institutions from processing transactions for major Russian banks. We get more in this report from Reuters TV. President Biden's administration has drawn up a range of severe sanctions to be imposed if Russia invades Ukraine. Three sources told Reuters U.S. financial institutions would be banned from processing transactions for major Russian banks. They aim to hurt the Russian economy by cutting so-called correspondent banking relationships between targeted Russian banks and U.S. lenders that enable international payments. The sources also said the U.S. would place certain Russian individuals and companies on the specially designated nationals list. It would effectively kick them out of the U.S. banking system, ban trade with Americans and freeze their U.S. assets. It was unclear who the targets would be, but the sources believe top Russian lenders like VTB Bank and Sparebank could be on the list. Experts believe it would be a meaningful blow to sanctioned bodies, as it would make it difficult to deal in U.S. dollars, the global reserve currency. That's news, but for the very latest, you can visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD, 99.3 FM.